Hey guys, uh, I wanted to um, talk about the talk that Bobby's Perspective had with Phil Escott um, because it's a topic that's super, um, super interesting to me. Um, I am a big advocate of um, meditation and I've been meditating since I was uh, 23 years old. And um, I also did a lot of yoga and stuff. So I, you know, I was constantly making an effort to like be plant-based because I thought that was like the most compassionate thing to do. And um, it's interesting going on that, uh, on that journey with like spirituality and meditation and always seeking like higher, uh, higher states of awareness. And um, I find that in the carnivore community, it's kind of like shunned, shunned upon. And, you know, I guess because it's kind of tied to veganism. So I, I understand that. Um, but, um, I've got a few thoughts on this. So I've noticed, um, before starting carnivore, I was a lot more diligent about meditation, um, because I had to meditate, uh, every day and for a certain amount of time to kind of achieve a baseline of wellness that I haven't had to do ever since going carnivore. I feel like my baseline mood is just always just like content and stable. So in essence, carnivore has kind of like ruined my meditation practice. And I, I would love to talk to Phil Escott someday about this because he's somebody who also um, was very into meditation. And I don't know if he still practices, but uh, it's something I still do every day just because now with the added benefit of, you know, this like constant mental stability with carnivore, I feel like meditation would be even more effective. But the caveat there is that because I already have like a baseline of just feeling well all the time, I have less motivation to try to attain those states of consciousness or those that increased state of awareness. It kind of makes me wonder how, how many great things have come out of like deep suffering. Like even when you think about, you know, philosophers and scientists and people have made like these wild discoveries that have probably stemmed from like this constant from like having an uneasy mind and having to like just constantly like ruminate and, and think about things and um it would be interesting to see like just how many things have arisen out of like having an unsteady mind and just like deep suffering um, so anyway, yeah, carnivore has essentially ruined my spiritual practice. Um, I don't feel so bad about it though. Um, but I do want to keep, I, I do think that it's just so important to see how our minds paint our like day-to-day -day experiences. Um, because, you know, you see so much suffering in the world and once you see for yourself, like just how much your mind affects uh, every single moment of your life, um, you just become truly convinced that that's, that that's the most important thing in life is just having a healthy mind, uh, more so than having a healthy body. Um, ironically, having a healthy body will help you have a healthy mind too, but, um, you know, going through, uh, going through a mental crisis and having like health issues and all of this stuff, it kind of, um, how I recovered from my like terrible anxiety disorders was using meditation because I didn't know that diet. Um, you know, if I had known about the carnivore diet when I was 23 years old and I went through this, I would have, you know, I would have jumped in head first and um, probably would have gone better a lot sooner. Um, but I was so convinced that the problem was my mind that I just, uh, I became obsessed with, um, you know, learning about the nature of the mind and, and like contemplative practices. Um, I've done a 10 day Vipassana retreat. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but basically it's a 10 day silent retreat where you're not even allowed to bring like a book to read because your the whole point is to completely remove any kind of stimulus and distraction, um, from your mind so that you can introspect and, um, you know, process like emotions that come up and stuff. So I'll do a separate video on that. Um, if you're curious, you can just type in Vipassana, uh, testimonials or something on YouTube and you're going to see a bunch of people talking about their 10-day retreats. Um, it is single-handedly the most transformative thing I have ever done in my life. Probably the more the most difficult thing aside from just like surviving a, a mental health crisis. Um, you kind of leave 
that retreat with the confidence that you're going to be able to face any emotion from any catastrophe ever, like no matter what it is. Um, so yeah, anyway, uh, I just wanted to, um, see if anybody else is kind of like in my shoes, uh, cause I would love to talk to other people about this. Uh, like I said, it looks like in the carnivore community, most people are kind of like, eh, meditation, yoga, you know, and I don't see, I think that sucks because I think meditation is still extremely, an extremely, extremely useful tool, um, for improving happiness and, you know, beyond whatever your baseline level of contentment is, uh, meditation can only help. And especially, um, you know, with how, how tribal we are, even in like the nutrition community, you know, there's this constant, um, we're constantly making others out of like ourselves. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, you know, something that you kind of get, uh, through meditation when you practice long enough, usually there's like a common set of, um, understandings that almost everybody kind of realizes just by watching their own mind. And eventually when you are able to sit still long enough and watch your mind, you get these gaps of like no thought, let's say, where you feel very connected to everything around you and your sense of self or what's, what's referred to as the ego in the spiritual community um, essentially disappears and you feel connected to everything around you. And that's kind of like, you know, I obviously I don't live my life like that from moment to moment because I have a mind and, you know, the monkey mind is always like running. But I've been able to confirm in my own experience that that's the reality of, of, of existing. Like we are ultimately just this like one organism and, you know, using that understanding to look at things, you know, when you see people like fighting, um, over anything, you know, in the nutrition space, you know, the vegans and the carnivores and we all hate each other. And it's like, um, it's not nice is what I'm saying. <laughs> so that's why I try not to like argue too much. And, you know, I try to, um, uh, not like bash vegans and all that stuff because, you know, everybody's ultimately just seeking happiness and, um, you know, we're all going about it through different means. Since going carnivore, I kind of, um, I've been thinking about this and it, I think about it a lot, actually. I wonder if the reason why going vegan and going plant-based has become such a, such a staple to like the meditation movement, uh, is actually because it induces a greater state of suffering, which motivates you to meditate harder. Um, because that was definitely the main driver behind me med meditating. I mean, besides like the insights that I got from just like watching my own mind. And I, I, I still think it's an incredible tool. Like I said, um, you know, the intensity and the, the amount of motivation that you have to sit with your uncomfortableness it's definitely greater, like the more you're suffering, you know, whereas if you're feeling fine, like you feel like you don't really have a good reason to sit down and, you know, watch your thoughts. Cause you know, you feel like, well, there's other things I'd rather do. Um, so it's interesting to think that maybe veganism and plant-based diets are conducive to spirituality because it makes you suffer so much in your body that you're willing to sit down for several hours to look at your mind and then doing that of course is going to induce like a sense of peace when you do it long enough with enough concentration um yeah i don't know i think about this stuff a lot anyways i want to make more videos on this kind of thing because uh it's uh, very interesting to me and um now going through carnivore and like you know uh, experiencing what it's like to kind of address physiological anxiety through means of diet. Uh, this is something else I've been thinking about a lot. I feel like anybody who's struggling with mental health, um, you know, we, we tend to like to see things as like psychological. So we need to go see a therapist and just like address the mind and inquire about people's past experiences and mommy and daddy issues and whatnot. But I feel like now the ultimate approach to achieving good mental health is you have to target it through physiological means and also psychological. So 
you know, I would say like the very first step is address your diet to see how much of your anxiety is actually like a biological phenomenon. Um, and then once you address your physiological anxiety, you'll see just how much of the psychological stuff you have left to work on. Um, I've been talking uh, a lot to, um, I made a friend on Facebook that she, uh, uh, she's got a, she's got a number of issues. Uh, she's got like Hashimoto and PCOS and, uh, and she's been struggling with depression and anxiety since she was 13 years old. She just literally woke up from one day to the next, um, just in dread and, and panic. And she's been put on lithium and all, all kinds of stuff. Uh, she's 27 years old now. So she's, you know, effectively been half her life, uh, just medicated. And after doing carnivore for a while, she's, she's, uh, slipped up quite a bit, um, but anyway, she managed to get off her antidepressants and um, I've been talking to her for a couple of months now. We've actually become like great friends. And, um, you know, I've seen, I, I've been telling her from the start that she needs to do meditation. She needs to do meditation. And I still think she does. Um, but it's just incredible to see how much of her mental symptoms improve just by diet alone. And um, I do think that you can heal from mental illness through meditation alone. But this is something else I thought about recently, because this was the case for me. I just spent hours and hours every single day meditating and reading books on the mind. And that's what got me better. But I wonder how much of that I would have had to do if I had just changed my diet. Because um, I, you know, like you see people in the East and, you know, these monks and stuff, they're on a super crappy diet, given what we know. Um, and they're still happy people uh, because they can meditate all day. And that'll like induce, you know, parasympathetic like you're, it'll increase parasympathetic uh, nervous system activity. So you're always well rested. You don't have stress. Um, and that's healing in itself, you know, even though your diet might be inadequate. Um, so yeah, it's just interesting to see that, um, you know, diet can do so much without having to put so much effort into like the psychological stuff. So I definitely think um, that the, Best approach to health is definitely diet. And then you can see how much psychological shit you have to deal with afterwards. So anyway, that's it. Uh, I don't know what else. I didn't have anything else to talk about for this video. So I'll just leave it there. Comment below if you guys have anything to say or um, have are going through a similar experience. would love to talk to you guys about it. And um, see you guys in the next one.